My name is Abe Duque and I am an instructor at Dubspot. I teach production and also the DJ course. So today we will explore in detail the questions related to Pioneer's music management system record box. So there's a period where DJs enjoyed a very nice standard in the equipment that they used. What I'm speaking about is when every DJ just had to worry about buying vinyl records because in the club you'd have technique turntables which were just a solid standard and didn't really have to think about other things. The modern DJ has to deal with an ever splintering set of ways to play your music, which can be a very hard job just keeping up with what's happening. Pioneer in the meantime has been having these CDJs in clubs and slowly but surely have sort of become a new standard in clubs. They're implementing new functionality to be able to compete with whatever is being splintered out there. And there's a situation where people are getting a little tired of carrying computers to a club. I know I am. And I'd be very happy if I could just maybe carry a USB drive and that's it. And actually that's what's happened. I remember when I first heard of people switching from vinyl to actually using a computer, I would ask people, hey, why did you switch? And most people would say to me, well, it's because I'm tired of carrying those records. Well, I could see people saying now, I'm tired of carrying that computer. Now you could show up to the club with your USB drive or if you want, just with your smartphone. Recordbox is a tool to organize your music for playback on Pioneer gear. Models included under Recordbox's umbrella are the CDJ 2000 Nexus, the CDJ 900, the 850, the 350, the MEP 4000, and the XDJ Aero. So each with a varying compatibility as to the functionality and integration to the Recordbox system. So you can look up what Recordbox features will apply to what Pioneer device from the online Recordbox manual. It's akin to the iTunes iPod dynamic where in iTunes you organize your music for playback on the iPod. The software analyzes and saves waveform, beat grid, BPM, and key information of music files and then can be loaded quickly onto Pioneer gear either through a USB device, an SD card, wireless LAN, or a Pro DJ link, which is a wired LAN. In track preparation, you can save cue points, three hot cues, and 10 loops per track, all which can be set in the software using a scrolling waveform, which plays back in real time. Like in any track browser, you can view and sort your collection within 31 categories using tags and other file information. The record box system lets you transfer music from your computer to your phone, either to iOS or Android gear, but you can't transfer music from the device back to the computer. You can, however, sync the changes you made on your mobile to the computer. One more thing, record box will also do key detection, but you need to go into the preferences and set that up so that when the track gets analyzed, key detection is also there, which is wonderful because this program is for free. So you guys can go ahead and download it, start using it, and key detect your tracks even for free. All right, so let's, let's take the system for a spin. So I have some tracks here on this USB drive. So I've chosen a folder, and as soon as you choose the folder, the program is gonna to start to analyze the tracks. Now, the analysis is going to be beat grid directed. So the BPM and the downbeats, all of that's going to be analyzed and hopefully everything will be good to go. So once the tracks are analyzed, we can just grab our tracks here and just drop them right into the player. You can hit play on the side here and you'll hear the track play. Now, if you notice, there are some little white and red dots on the moving or scrolling waveform. Those kind of signify where the beats are. And I can see the transients, and the transients are those parts in the wave where significant things happen. And usually what that means is like beats, uh, like bass drums and, and, and snares. That's where you'd find those. And I could see the transients on this uh, waveform, and it looks like it's pretty healthy. It looks like the, the, the syncing to the beat grid has been done quite adequately. I can move across by using my mouse and checking different positions. And it's pretty much remaining in sync with the beat grid. Now, 
if I wanted to ultimately check it, I need to open up this little toolbar area where I get a, a, a set of tools to use to make sure that my beat grids are locked in. Uh, the first one that I'm going to really be looking at is this metronome because it is to the metronome that we need to ultimately test. The metronome plays the official beat grid of the program. And it sounds to me like this track is beat graded quite okay. So I'll have to turn off the metronome. The metronome has a three stage sort of thing going on. You have to kind of press it three times. Every time you press it, it plays it a little louder and then on the fourth time it turns off. And then if you want to turn it on again, you do the whole number once again. So in this little toolbar area, you can do all that beat gridding correction if you needed to. Right down here, you can set up things like maybe drop an initial beat grid with this little button. I can expand and contract my grid with this, these two buttons. And I could move my grid over in time or shift it with these guys right here. We have the, the ability to double or half the tempo. Sometimes with some tracks, especially like things like dubstep or things like that, the tempo when analyzed by a computer can come up as 140 or 70. And you might say, well, yeah, it's technically right 140, but I want it to register at 70. Well, I'll just come in here and half it. Right now we're looking at a track that's 125 BPM and that's how I want it. But if I wanted it to be half, I just hit that. And then it asked me if I wanted to adjust the beat grid and then I do that. All right, so just like that, I can drop in other tracks and test them. And it works really, really nicely, this program, which is really cool because if you really wanted to, you could just use this program as kind of a way to play back your music. So let's keep on testing these out. Test it to the metronome, of course. I, I must say the, the engine that does all this analyzing is a pretty solid engine. It's probably one of the, one, the best ones I've seen or heard so far. Out of all the tracks I dump in, I always expect to have to correct a lot. And I still am waiting for a track that I dump in there, analyze, and have to come in and save it from you know the computer's uh, mistake. But the computer always gets it right for some reason. So good job there, Pioneer. So you get a lot of choices like storing hot cues, loops. This is all really fun to work with and very easy actually. So as a track plays, I have three slots that correspond to the three slots in the hot cues on say the CDJ 2000. I can drop a hot cue at any time by just pressing one of these slots. You probably want to do it with the quantize feature enabled because then regardless of how your timing is, it'll drop it right on the next quarter note. So I'm going to drop a cue right here. And there we have it. And now you can see it registers as a green button instead of a blank black button. And when I press it, I can go back and listen to that cue point. Now, there's a little loop area here where I could set some loops. I'm going to let me pull this music back a bit. And now it's, it's playing. And I can select from 4 to 32 beats to make my loop in. So if I choose 4 beats, of course that's one bar usually if you're doing 4-4, four, four, if you're DJing in 4-4. Four, four. Now that I've selected this loop, I can store that loop into one of these slots as not a hot cue, but a loop. And you'll see that come up as yellow means that I've stored a loop in there. And again, if I let that loop go and let the track play, I can come back to it at any time by just clicking that. Now, all this, what I'm doing now, it's kind of it's supposed to reflect your experience on the CDJ, and it very much does. All right, so let's get another one of these cue points in there. Just, just get out of that loop. This little button here will get you out of the loop. Let's drop another point in there and there we have it you have three cue points and say you, you you've got your three cue points but then you realize you know what I, I didn't like one of them I want to get rid of it or maybe you didn't want to have a loop stored in there it's just as easy as hitting this little X next to the slot to get rid of it and now it's gone and I can 
do it again and select another one. And now I have another cue point to make. All right, so those are the hot cue slots. In addition to that, you have the availability of storing 10 more cue points or loops. And you find that here to the right. So I'm just gonna let it go and hit memory. And as you see, one of these loops is stored there. Now I'm going to hit a, another loop. I'm just gonna set up a loop and hit another, hit memory one more time. And a second one is stored there. Now these are different than the hot cues in the sense that these are more related to just setting up the music for playback from a certain position. They're not meant to use while you're playing back uh, the music in real time. So you can set one of these to do this active loop function, where if I hit active on this, it will set it so that as the song plays and that loop or cue comes into you know, play, it will turn on looping for it at that time. But again, just like the other ones, little X's right next to it will get rid of them. All right, so if you have a look at the browser here, you can do a number of functions. First of all, here are your playlists that you might set up. And here, talking about hot cues still, you can set up these hot cue banks, which are really kind of crazy. What they allow you to do is make it so that you can set three hot cues, but this time, they could be hot cues within different songs. So you could jump in, the, uh, in real time to different songs. So I could set one to this one, but if I have another song playing, let me go back to my collection and drop another song. I could drop another song in there. And while that's playing, I would go back to my hot cue bank and I could just drop that one in there. And I could do a third song if I want or go back to the first one or whatever. But these three cues can be now loaded into my uh, CDJ 2000 Nexus and have them play back for me in real time and from different songs. So as long as you have your USB device or your external media of whatever sort set up or even the wireless LAN set up, you can just trigger cues from different songs in real time, which is crazy to me. Can't do that one. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.